morning. So we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going into the series called Next, and I'm looking forward to it. Today has a lot to do with kind of the idea of being aware, <clears throat> pardon me, and being ready. Being aware and being ready. So I've shared before that uh, when I came home to the Lord, it was, <clears throat> I, I just swallowed something, and it's there, so hopefully it won't bug me throughout the whole service. I drank about three bottles of water. It's still going on. Um, I came home to the Lord when I, I got incarcerated for a couple of years, when I was a kid, 19 years old. And then after I got out, I went to Bible college, because that's where I came home to the Lord, went to Bible college, and then directly went into ministry. So fast forward about seven years, I'm a youth pastor in Northern California, and I was invited to go speak at a, uh, a youth summer camp in Yosemite. So I was jazzed about that. Yeah, let's do that. I loaded up the truck, went to Yosemite, got there, and there was a, a few kids, three of them in particular, who weren't allowed to go and hang out with the other kids for the activities during the day because they were, they were like the bad boy club. They got in trouble. So I'm like, those are my peeps, right? So I grabbed those three kids and said, come with me. We're going to go fishing. So I got them in the truck and went down to uh, the river there that runs through the valley. <clears throat> I think that's the Merced River. And we have a great time. At least two of them and I are connected. The one, he's just, he's just too much of a little bad boy. So he doesn't want to connect with a, you know, a youth pastor. So we're driving out of the valley and going back to the spot. And I roll through a stop sign, which I always thought was legal in California. I didn't know that was even an issue, right? <clears throat> My gosh, red lights are suggestions around here. So I roll through this stop sign. And sure enough, woo, woo, get pulled over. I'm thinking, oh, bummer, but that's about as far as I was thinking. I just, whatever, bummer. Turn, roll over, he comes and he gets my license and registration, and he goes back to his car, and he's gone a little too long. And all of a sudden, I hear from his car, Mr. Randolph, get out of the car right now. And I'm like, oh, no. I know that tone, right? <laughs> so something's happening. So I get out of the car. And I'm like, hey, what's going on here, you know? And he goes, up against the, your, your, the bed of your truck, hands up where I could see him. And, and now I'm mad, right? Not always a good thing to be right there, but now I'm mad because I got these three kids. I'm like, you're making a mistake and stuff like that. So I turn towards him and I go, what are you doing? This is, what are you doing? And he, hand on gun, up against the car. So I'm like, all right, now we're up against the car. Now we're up against the car. We're doing the car, 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 car. So... Anyways, these, and I got these kids who are in the back just like, you know, glued. Windows are up, so I don't know if they can hear everything, but they can see me, you know. And come to find out, I didn't even realize this, I had a warrant out for like the last seven years. I had a warrant from something that occurred even before I got locked up that was a restitution that had to be paid in the amount of like $72, to some company or something like that that I didn't even know. And here I am now, they're about ready to bring me in. He's going to bring me into jail in Yosemite Valley. And he's back there at his car doing all this, and I'm freaking out like, I cannot believe this, you know, trying to beg and plead with this guy. He won't listen. Another, another officer shows up, and he's walking around over here, and I finally, I'm like, okay. So I ask him, I say, hey, do you happen to be a Christian to this other cop? Are you a Christian? He goes, uh, yeah. I go, let me tell you what I'm doing. I am preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to kids, and this devil is trying to prohibit. No, I didn't say this devil. <clears throat> but I did say, man, I think the enemy is trying to keep me from preaching. I, you know, something happened. I had no idea. I'm a minister and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, all right, let me. So he goes in and he handles it, and, and I get to go with a stern warning of getting this handled. I'm like, yeah, if I, you know, get in the car, and, and the kids are like, they're junior hires, right? So, like, they were like, this is the best part of the whole camping trip. This, is, this was incredible, you know? And even the one that wouldn't talk to me at all during the day, he's like, are you blank, blankety, blank, blank? That was blank, blankety cool. I'm like, it takes a criminal in order to get this kid to open up. I was unaware, so I was not ready for what was about to happen. And that's kind of what we're talking about. I, I think a lot of us are unaware of wh what's going on right now, and it's keeping us from what God really wants to happen. That's what we're looking at for the next four weeks in our series. What's next, God? 
Where are we headed to next? As a church, we've got some neat things that are happening, but more importantly, just as individuals. How many of you, don't, don't need to raise your hand, but you feel a stirring, and it's like, what's next? There's something next coming for my life. So here's a theme verse that we're going to look at for this entire series. <clears throat> Pardon me. Why don't you read it along with me? Nice and loud. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Are you ready? See, I am doing a new thing. <clears throat> now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. This was spoken to the nation of Israel when they were in a time they had been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And now they were being set free to go back to their homeland, which was Jerusalem. Where they were in Babylon to get back to Jerusalem was about a 900-mile walk through some tough terrain, desert, <clears throat> and wilderness. And so God was talking to them while they're on this walk, saying, hey, trust me. I know where you're at. You're in this journey, but I am with you, and I am doing something new in your lives. Hold on to that. And see, here's the thing. This is what God does. He specializes in doing new things in people's lives. That's what he loves to do. Walking with Jesus, I don't know what you, how you feel about that, but walking with Jesus is never dull. There is, there, it's, there's never, I wish God were a little more boring sometimes. He is doing things all the time. He's just looking for people who are paying attention that will yoke up with him and go into the next so here's, here's what we're going to look at this week. This is what it's titled. Where is here? Where is here? You ever talk to somebody on the phone and you're trying to give them directions to get to where you're at or tell them how to get somewhere? What's the first question you ask them? Where are you? Where, where is it that you're at? Because we've got to know the starting point in order to give you direction on how to get to the next step. Another way to say that, fill this in on your blank. To figure out where we are going, we have to know where we are. Figure out where we're going, we've got to know where we're at. How many of you know the difference between a browser and a conqueror? So a browser, if they're going to the store for something, and uh, say they've got to go to the mall and they've got one item in mind that they need to go get. To a browser, <clears throat> they don't care where they park. It's irrelevant. Because just getting that item is not the whole point. They walk into the mall... And they're going to get there to wherever that place is, that little shop. But on the way, oh, isn't that cute? I didn't see that before. And they walk into this store and they look at that. And notice how I did it just like a woman, like a woman is the only browser. There's some guy browsers around here too. <clears throat> and go into a shop and look at that, try on 50 ball caps, you know, and I'm going to look good in this. And stop by a browser, browses around, and stops and gets a Cinnabon over here and just has a time at it, and they finally get to their destination, they buy that thing. But if they get other items on the way there, that's just kind of a bonus. It was just a God thing. How neat. So that's a browser. A wanderer is like that. A conqueror, a conqueror, if they don't know where the store is at the mall, they just know they got to go to the mall, they're going to park right close to the front entrance, as close as they can. They're going to go in the front entrance. Why? Because at the front entrance of most malls is a big board, Right? And it has a red X and it says, you are here. And then they find where they have to go and they plot a course to be direct. And they go. And they're not stopping. They're on a hunt. They're on a mission. They're going to conquer this thing. They get their item and they're out just like a ghost. Weren't even hardly there. They know where they're at. How many of you are browsers? How many of you are conquerors? How many of you conquerors are married to a browser? It makes for a lot of fun when we go shopping. I do. I tell my wife, I say, give me a list. Just give me a list. Tell me where to go. I'm on this. What are we getting after? You go. You go do your, just give me a list. I'll meet you back. <laughs> to figure out where we're going, we have to know where we're at. You know, what is that red X? Where am I right now? To know that, then I know that God has a plan for where I'm at just right now. I want to know my next all the time. Maybe you're like that too. I want to know what's coming up, what he's got in mind, but... I need to understand the significance of my here. Now, we're going to look at a, a story for these four weeks and look at it from a couple of different angles and pull different things out. And this first one, it's about, it's about Simon Peter, and it's referencing his starting point. This is where he was. So let's, let's look at it together. We're going to read the entire passage today. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. It says, One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now, go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we had worked all last night, didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man, for he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. They were just doing their routine. They were just doing, it was another day. They're fishing and washing their nets and going to go home and have dinner and go to bed and come out and, and do it again until Jesus shows up in their here. So we're going to look at this. Jesus shows up in their here and it makes all the difference. How do we respond well in our here? That's what we want to look at this morning. Not next. How do we respond well in our here? One is this. Remember this. God is with us in our here. God's with us in our here. Just the mundane routines of life, like Simon Peter. We don't want to fall prey, guys, to thinking that God is really only interested in us or communicating with us or dealing with us when there's a big thing. Like, God's too busy, I can't meddle with him with the unimportant, you know. But when there's a crisis, a financial crisis, a sickness, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, broken relationship, something like that, then we go to God. That he's not, he's not engaging in just the stuff of life. But he's a father, you see. So it'd be like me, you know, one of my sons calling me, and they, they say, hey, what's up, Dad? I go, what are you doing, man? What's going on? And they say, oh, just chilling. I'm like, did somebody die? Did, I, I, is there an emergency? Are you sick? Are you in the hospital? <clears throat> what's happening? Are you, did, you, did you lose your money? Did you lose your job? What's going on? He's like, I'm just chilling. I'd be like, well, I don't want to talk to you if nothing's happening. <laughs> this is so, so anti. I, I, I like the moments where nothing's happening. Do you know what I'm saying? As a dad, it's not, I'm glad they'll call me at crisis times and the big things, but the relationship is built with just the stuff of life. Jesus wants to be in our here. Even if you feel your here is mundane, the here matters a great deal. It's preparing us for our there. And God uses every season of life. The seasons like some of you may be in that are kind of crazy, that got stuff going on, or the seasons where you're like, I don't get it. I just, I feel like, you know, I'm just doing my thing. God wants to be active in your life during every season of your life. And when you begin to believe that, you begin to anticipate and look, what's going on? What are you doing? What are you doing in my life, God? And the mundane moments are turned into an adventure, even, even if it's just going to the job in the morning. You're ready to be used. It's like in Ephesians where it says, my feet are prepared with the gospel readiness of peace. Like, I'm ready. Lord, what do you got today? Who, who am I supposed to share your love with? Who am I supposed to do this? What, how am I going to grow? How am I going to know you more today? Every day matters, whether it's mundane or it's big. And sometimes it's not mundane. Sometimes we wish it were mundane, but it's crisis. And we look at our circumstances and we're like, how is God in this, right? There's a verse that many of us know, we've read it before. It can sound rather trite at first, but it's anything other than that. Let's look at it. Romans 8, 28. We are confident. It says, we are confident that God is able to orchestrate. What's the next word? <clears throat> Everything. That's a, that's a crazy statement. That's a declaration right there. That God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation to live according to his plan. And he's not saying that everything is good and beautiful. Cancer is not good and beautiful. Losing your job, divorce, these things are not good and beautiful. But God is saying, you can trust me. 
that whether you're here is horrific or whether you're here is mundane, whether it's wonderful. I am in the here. The here matters. And he is able to redeem everything. I've watched this, guys. This has been such a beautiful thing to me over the years in ministry. It's one of my favorite words ever, redemption. Because I've watched him do it thousands of times in people's lives where something happens and it looks devastating. I've watched it happen in my own life. And you look and say, where's God? He's there. And if we love him, if we will trust him, I've seen it, whether it's broken relationships, it's sickness, it's natural disasters, we cannot try to understand the environment and what's going on in our lives in our world without God being brought into the equation. And we know, if I trust you, it doesn't mean this thing becomes good. What it means is that there is nothing, nothing too far reaching for you, nothing too difficult for God to take and say, trust me, watch, watch, watch what I, watch. I will turn this thing into something good in your life. Here's the good news. He cannot fail when somebody trusts him and looks to him. He will not. He is that loyal and committed to us. The problem is we try to fix it ourselves. Or we try to get out of the here too early and get into the next. When God is saying, I got you in the here for a reason. Stay there with me. Here's the second thing I want us to remember and pull from our story. It's this. Here often involves waiting. Should have said more than often. <laughs> it involves waiting. Now, I don't know the story because it doesn't say so with Simon Peter, but I could tell from what happened with him. He took off. He left his career, his occupation, left it all and went and followed Jesus. That tells me that that was a man who was ready for something to change, that there was something stirring in his heart, maybe something like, I don't know what's going on. I know I was meant for more than just to do this. And Jesus showed up, and then it made sense. He went into his next. Waiting involves anticipating. We don't know, but we know something's coming. You ever, you ever feel that way? You ever kind of get that? I'm not sure what, but something's coming. So last week, uh, my birthday, so Sam took me golfing, which was fun. So we go, and we're, we're playing golf. We're having a blast. We're on, like, the ninth hole, and we're going down. Sam's a pretty good golfer, but on this particular shot, he pushed it to the right. So it went over by a little lake, and, and so he went that way, and then I went into the fairway because that's where my ball was yeah. airway. So I'm going down, and then he's, he's looking for his ball over there. And all of a sudden, it was, I, I cannot over-exaggerate. I cannot overstate how shrill this was. We heard this loud scream from this dude. Ha! And he's just screaming. And then he starts going, holy crud. He was, wasn't saying. And he's running and he's shaking his hands like this. And he's running towards Sam. He's, what? Can you? Hey! Hey! And, and I thought, oh my gosh. Sam's about to hit the wrong ball. But chill, dude. It's the wrong ball. We got Here's another one for you, you know? He's racing towards Sam like this. And, and now I'm, in, I'm going, you know, Sam was turning. He's like, all right, game on. What are we doing here? <laughs> you know what's about to happen and I'm coming over there and the guy runs right up and we finally hear what was happening hole in one I got a hole in one he was so ecstatic screaming he runs up to Sam who Sam was postured for a fight in a wrestling match at that time and the guy just grabs him and hugs him I got a hole in one leaves him runs over to me I got a and he was sweating profusely too he was he was a big dude. Oh, it was so comical. It's funny. He was about my age. We took the video of him. You know, we got his phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad to share this moment with you, dude. <laughs> he walks over to the green and he gets this video and he brings it down and he lifts it up. I love you, mom. <laughs> oh, it was funny. But in the moment, we didn't know what was going on. The next was a good moment. We got to share and celebrate with this dude who got a holy one. But at the time, we weren't sure what was going to happen next. Some of you might be there. It's like, a little crazy. <laughs> not sure what's going on, what's happening here. I know this is my here, but, you know, I'm not sure what's coming next. I know there is a next. And you might be tempted to think that God is unaware. 
that he's not aware of what's going on in your life. It's like he's too busy in, in Florida right now, or he's too busy in Mexico, or he's too busy in Houston, that your, your life is like insignificant. It's not true. He fathers each one of us, and he cares about our next. The problem is if we don't learn to trust God in the here, we try to hurry into the next, and we miss it. We miss it. Waiting in the here is supreme importance. And listen, guys, waiting is not like, well, I'm just waiting. I'm going to do my thing and see when God wants to show up, he can. Waiting is active. It is not passive. It's active. It's all about faith. It's about the gymnasium of our faith where it's being strengthened because we don't have circumstances to necessarily uh, confirm what we're believing. Sometimes our circumstances are against what we're believing, right? Right? And we have to exercise our faith. And in that waiting time, our faith is getting stronger so that we become ready for the next. I love this verse. This verse has ministered to me so much over the years. Read it with me. It's in Psalm 27, 13 and 14. And the psalmist is facing some things. And he says, I would have lost heart, meaning I was there. Some of you have been there. Some of you might be there. Where it's like, I'm about to lose heart in this. Because I would have lost heart. It would have happened. Unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Meaning not just one day in the by and by and the hereafter when I get to heaven. But I believed that I would see his promises. I believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So then he encourages us to wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. He shall. Not maybe. Wait on the Lord. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, word wait in the Hebrew, it's a word kafa. And it means to anticipate, to be expected. So we're not just waiting to say, God, when, when are you going to do anything? Lord, when are you going to do it? God, when are you going to show me? When are you going to tell me? When are you going to? It's not that. It's waiting. We start asking different questions, not like, God, what are you doing? But God, what are you doing in me? What's going on in here? What's happening now? And then that, even if we're facing hard times, that's when we go back to the verse we read earlier, where it says, we are confident that God is able to orchestrate everything to work towards something good and beautiful when we love him and accept his invitation to live according to his plan. Yeah. And like, God, I don't get it, but I'm digging into you. I am digging into you. I'm not being passive about this. This time I'm in right now, whether it's mundane or dramatic, I am paying attention. I am ready. What are you doing in my life? That's so key. I really believe somebody needs to hear that today here. And here's the third thing, and we're going to close with. What happens here prepares us for there, you see. That's the key right there. This is of such supreme importance right now. Most of us, most of, I think the majority of us, we get impatient with the waiting, don't we? We want to get on. I'm going to get onto that thing that we think we need or that we're, what's going to make me fulfilled or whatever. And yet, here is where you are. You cannot be anywhere other than where you are. So we have to embrace the here so that we can be prepared by God to merge with the there when the next comes our way. That's huge. Jesus was saying to Simon Peter, I know you think you're just fishing and you've been fishing and there's just been this cry in your heart for something more but you've just been doing this thing you didn't realize that that fishing and that patience it took and the responsibility it took and all that was preparing you to be a fisherman of people. It wasn't wasted time. You just weren't seeing it as preparation. So that's the question is, are you seeing this time that you're in as a time where you, be, you are being prepared to merge with the opportunity? It's like somebody says, you know, I... I am so ready for that promotion. I deserve it. I'm ready. And maybe you do. But do you understand that right now, maybe God is just honing your skill set because there's something with that another career choice that you don't even know is involved in it, but he's honing you right now? Listen, he can bring the next whenever is right timing. So you're here is important. Some people think, I'm going to be generous one day. <laughs> Man, God blesses me. I'm going I'm to give. I'm going to do these things. And kind of say, and practice that right now. Because if you're faithful in the little right now and you're generous with right now, then I'll be able to bless you and trust you to be generous with more. There's people who are saying, I want that mate. <laughs> I want that mate in my life. I get it. It's a good thing. But perhaps God is saying, I want to 
do you so that when you do meet that right person, not the wrong one, but that right person, you're not looking for that person to validate you. You're not looking to get your worth or your value from that person because you've become whole in me as an individual. And so there's these things where it's like, I know we want to, but we don't want to force ourselves in the next and prematurely birth something to where it's not healthy and we're not ready for it. It's a wonderful quote. I think it was from Leonard Ravenhill. He said it one time, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. It means it comes. It's got, it's got its moment. You can't try to go find it later. It, there, there's that moment. Here's the question, guys. Will you be ready when it comes? See, God's got a next for you. He really does. He cares about what you're in right now. He's just saying embrace your here. Don't be frustrated by your here. Try not to be. I know I get that way. But embrace the here. It is what it is. Lord knows. So we're not saying, God, get me out of here. We're saying, Lord, what are you doing? So that when that moment comes and my next arrives, that opportunity arrives, I've been being honed by God and prepared by God, and now, man, I'm able to merge into that opportunity, and I'm running. Whether it was that relationship or is that ministry calling that he brought us into or that new job career, whatever it was, the here matters. I really believe that there's some people who really needed to hear that this morning. I want to close with a passage from Eugene Peterson's book, Run With the Horses. Tremendous author. Uh, this is so beautifully put, and I want you to pay attention. We'll have it up on the screen. The Bible makes it clear that every time there is a story of faith, it is completely original. God's creative genius is endless. He never, fatigued and unable to maintain the rigors of creativity, resorts to mass-producing copies. Each life is a fresh canvas on which he uses lines and colors and shades and lights, textures and proportions that he has never used before. We see what is possible. Anyone and everyone is able to live a zestful life that spills out of the stereotyped containers that a sin-inhibited society provides. Such lives fuse spontaneity and purpose in green the desiccated landscapes with meaning. And we see how it is possible by plunging into a life of faith, participating in what God initiates in each life, exploring what God is doing in each event. This is our God. This is how he looks at us. He is so creative. He has a unique design, a unique design for each one of us. Here's we start asking the right questions. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on back up. We're going to have a, a song where we sit and we, we get to think about this and maybe have a moment of response. But if you're here today, and I, I, as I was praying about this message this week and working on it, I was thinking about areas in my life, too, where, I, where this is very applicable. And then I just had a sense, a real sense from my, the Holy Spirit that, you know what? I felt like this is going to be a real important series for many people in, in Venice Church. Just had a sense that there are people here who are really struggling with that next. What's that next? And here's the key, at least for this morning we're talking about. Embrace your now. Embrace your here. Don't fight it. It is what it is. Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what are you saying? Prepare me. Whether it's my faith being built up, or I'm supposed to pay attention how you want to use me even in my now, not just one day when I get this thing here, but you want to use me now. And we respond to God in that. And then life takes on the adventure again. We're not waiting for the adventure to come or the next thing to come so that we can start living. We can live now and live purposely. So let's pray. God, we are very grateful for you. That you were always at work in us and wanting to work through us. Help us to surrender, Lord, to what it is you're doing in our hearts and in our lives and how you want to use us in our here and prepare us so that we can successfully merge, Lord, with our next. We'll give you all the glory. We love you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.